Thanks so much. Well, good afternoon. We're here at the Charlotte County Disaster Recovery Center. Joining me is Dane Eagle, Secretary of Florida Department of Economic Opportunity, Kevin Guthrie, Florida Division of Emergency Management Director, Jimmy Petronas, Florida Chief Financial Officer, uh, Gracia Check, uh, our FEMA lead, uh, and then the First Lady of Florida, Casey DeSantis. And Mason. And I got Mason. You know, it's Columbus Day, so he's off, and so he's here to, to pitch in in any way that he can. He's his first time ever seeing food trucks. He's very, he's very interested in the food trucks. I'm glad they have that out there to be helping with people. Um, so this DRC is the fifth uh, that's been open since uh, Ian made landfall a little less than two weeks ago. Uh, FEMA's also either opened or in the process of opening additional DRCs in Hardy, Orange, Osceola, Seminole, and Polk counties. They may do more as the demand calls for that. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. So the goal of this, and Kevin Guthrie will talk about uh, a little bit about this location, what they have for the immediate future. But what you have is a place, and you don't need to come to these. You can sign up online for FEMA state stuff. That's fine. But if you have questions, you can come. So you have FEMA that is here. This county is approved for individual assistance and temporary housing. So you can come here and participate in those programs. If you have questions, folks here can help you. Uh, our state agencies are helping Floridians with things like disaster reemployment assistance. Uh, the Small Business Damage Survey, Small Business Emergency Bridge Loans. So to date, more than 8,000 unemployment assistance claims have been submitted. Uh, DEO has also activated the Disaster Recovery Jobs Portal to help connect businesses and individuals impacted by the hurricane with workforce programs. We have Highway Safety Motor Vehicles is here. If your identification got lost or destroyed in the storm, they can help process that for you so that you can get your requisite identifications back. Our DBPR agency is helping Floridians that have licensure needs, individual and business licensures. If you have issues with that, they want to be, they want to be helpful. Small Business Development Council is here to help with small businesses in a variety of ways for support and recovery. They have nine business recovery centers overall. Career Source Florida is here to help people with individual job needs, workforce training, the whole nine yards. We have Department of Children and Families, Florida Department of Health, here with any family needs, uh, crisis counseling and all the services they provide. Our Department of Veterans Affairs in the state of Florida is here to help with veterans who may need assistance. And the U.S. Car Army Corps of Engineers is on site to help those interested in utilizing the Operation Blue Roof program. So if you remember at our pods, we handed out a lot of the blue tarps, and that's fine, but this blue roof program, actually the roof is a little bit, this is more advanced than just a tarp. So a lot of people like that. Too. Look, it depends on how long you're gonna need that on there. The, the damage varies. Some lose, you know, you lose a dozen shingles versus losing major portion of your roof. That's gonna be a different prognosis in terms of the repairs. This DRC has five of Elon Musk Starlink internet uh, services here. So you come in and you can log on to the Starlink. You can use internet and make calls while you're, while you're here. So I got a couple of announcements on top of that. Uh, number one, I activated, as I mentioned, the Florida Small Business Emergency Bridge Loan Program. Uh, we made an initial tranche of 50 million available. We set aside 10 of that for agriculture uh, enterprises, small, small and family-owned agriculture, not mega megacorps. So we have that who were impacted by Hurricane Ian, and this provides short-term zero interest loans to the small businesses that were impacted. And as a result of the in-person assistance that Secretary Eagle and his team of DEO provided, uh, today we're already ready to award the first 2.5 million in loans to 55 small businesses with awardees ranging from restaurant to auto body shops. 34 of the 55 awards come from Charlotte, Collier, DeSoto, Hardy Lee, and Sarasota counties. So there's, there's gonna be more to come on that. Obviously you see there's damage 
uh, many of you here in Charlotte have seen. Although it's interesting, the newer buildings did, did pretty well. You know, you'll go see a McDonald's new construction, you wouldn't know a storm, but the sign is totally blown out, you know, that was on the road. So it just depends on how strong it was, but the strong stuff seemed to do very, very well. I think that shows uh, when you're building things up to the more modern codes, it, it did work. Nevertheless, we know there's a lot of business damage, so we're going to do a lot more on that, but that's a great opening tranche. Uh, the second thing that is good is Charlotte County. We went uh, last week, we were at the EOC here in Charlotte County. We wanted to see what the uh, outstanding needs were, and they were really focused on getting their schools reopened. And I think that's really, really important because you, know, you have a lot of families that have gone through, maybe their homes damaged, maybe they just didn't have significant damage, but they want to get back to normal. You have the kids, the kids really need to be in school. It's really important for them. It's important for the community. And so Charlotte submitted five requests uh, to us for assistance, including chillers to provide air conditioning at one of the middle schools, uh, prioritizing power restoration at one of the elementary schools, removing trees and debris from several schools, removing debris from bus stops, and new ceiling tiles to be replaced if some were damaged. And so Kevin Guthrie has directed that all of those requests be fulfilled uh, this week. So they fulfilled some, they're working on the rest this week. So as a result, uh, this morning, Charlotte County announced that all but three of their schools in the county will be open Monday morning. And so that's a great bounce back. It's going to be really, really significant. It's obviously important for the, the academic progression. We saw that during COVID when they were locking kids out of school in other parts of the country. And they did that for over a year. And that's created now years of learning loss. I'm happy to say in Florida, we made a priority to have our kids in school. We're much better off for that. Um, so the a third thing we're announcing today, it, it doesn't impact this area directly, but I think it shows the, the magnitude of what we just dealt with. Because uh, today, uh, we are at the fourth. Is today the actual fourth of Michael? Yes, sir. So today is the fourth anniversary of Hurricane Michael that impacted Northwest Florida it was a category five hurricane, a little bit different than this one, not as much flooding, not as much water, uh, but very powerful. And it really, really uh, operated almost like a buzzsaw going through the areas that it did. Well, today I can announce that as part of our long-term efforts to rebuild the community, uh, and as a sign of that the commitment needs to be lasting, uh, I'm announcing that we're awarding an additional $126 million to 24 communities across the panhandle that are continuing to strengthen and rebuild after Hurricane Michael. And, and four years ago, if you remember, it was I wasn't even governor yet. We had a campaign going on. You had the storm. It was kind of a big story, what, for like a week maybe, and then kind of people outside the area left, and you're seeing that here as well. So I became governor January 2019, and I said, look, this is, uh, we're, we haven't forgotten you. We understand that this is, there's a lot of current needs, but there's also just gonna be a lot we need to do over not just days, weeks, months, but even years. And so that's gonna be something similar that we're gonna see here in the Southwest Florida communities. And so if you look at what we're doing with uh, our continuing commitment for rebuilding from Hurricane Michael, today's award will be almost 50 million for Panama City, uh, 9 million for Bay County, 8.9 million for Mariana, 7.3 million for Gulf County, 5.5 million each to Callaway and Graceville, and 5.7 million to Jackson County. So this it helps them uh, rebuild and improve their infrastructure. It will help them be more resilient in face of future storms. And you, I mean, you've heard me say this, but I really think some of the things that happened in Southwest Florida after Charlie and after Irma made that significant damage in this for sure. But I think it would have been significantly worse had you not had some of those efforts. You know, I was just down in Fort Myers Beach over the weekend and I think they had, uh, FPL had hundreds of the concrete utility poles and only four of them were destroyed. And this is uh, ground zero 
hit and yet most of the infrastructure withstood. That probably wouldn't have been true 20 years ago. So these things are really meaningful to not only help people uh, get back on their feet, help the strength in the communities, but it does help you uh, as you face future weather events. And so I'm proud that we're able to make a difference on that. Uh, as many of you know, there was a massive effort to have linemen staged to be able to restore power. 42,000 total across all the utility companies. We're now in a situation where you know, there's still a couple pockets of Lee County with the Lee County Electrical Cooperative, uh, but all the other uh, providers are at, at basically 100%. You're gonna see uh, Fort Myers Beach. A lot of that was because there was ongoing search and rescue. And so there wasn't necessarily, there was a safety concern about pushing forward with the power too quickly, because you're going into structures that may not be safe. You have firefighters, you have these other first responders, and the decision was made locally that, okay, let's, let's do that. Well, now that we're going uh, in this more rebuild and recover mode, uh, you're gonna see them working on that. And I think it's really just a matter of safety. I think that there's gonna be some things that need to be done on Fort Myers Beach. A lot of it's just getting the debris out of there. And they're working really hard on that, but that's a major debris effort. So you have the debris removal, traditional debris, you also have massive numbers of vessels that, I mean, some of them, you have like these shrimp boats that are just like in a pile. Some boats got flung hundreds of feet out of the water into that. Although some of the boats that got moved actually didn't get destroyed. I saw some of them, some did, others didn't, but that's gonna take a whole effort. So the point on Fort Myers Beach is just FPL is ready to go. Um, it's really just a matter of making sure that the debris uh, it, we're not interfering with, they're not interfering with the debris and of course no search and rescue, but that, that I think that they're fine with that at this point. Then you have the islands, you have Sanibel and you have Pine Island. So what we did with Pine Island, as you know, we opened a bridge there last week after just a few days of working on to restore that bridge. It's really important to those residents. So what that allowed, and, and pe personnel had been helicoptering into the island and boating in. So they had been helping people with food, water. You did have some utility workers who had been in by Chinook helicopter to start uh, surveying the damage. But once you have that bridge, now you have all these supplies coming in. So they're working really hard on that. Um, they're making progress. Sanibel, the causeway got taken out in a few different places. We have said Florida Department of Transportation uh, has already executed a contract. They're working on restoring that. That will be done in relatively short order. They say sometime in October, but we don't want to wait until the causeway is done. So we have moved people in by both helicopter and by barge to send utility workers in there with equipment uh, to start really picking up the pieces. And so they've been doing that now for a number of days. Really extensive damage to the utility infrastructure. I saw massive numbers of utility poles snapped in half, lines everywhere. So that's gonna take a big effort. But our view was we don't wanna wait till the causeway is done before you even start on the power. We wanna be doing this in tandem. So it's not ideal that you have to barge people in because you're limited by your barge capacity, but I think it's something that's important. So you're gonna have, um, I guess there's gonna be a base, there is a base camp set up there now. So they actually have a base camp for utility workers on Sanibel, so they'll be sleeping there, working there, and we understand that that's important. So those two islands and then the Fort Myers Beach are kind of the, the outstanding. There are a couple LCEC pockets they said that they're gonna have it all done today, but if you remember, their initial prognosis was this gonna take almost to the end of October. We surged in thousands of linemen, and so that really was able to move it up. So hopefully all the people that can receive power on the mainland uh, get that, if they haven't already, that they have that uh, today, and we're, we're hopeful for that. But that, that is something you talk to your utility about. There's been over 2,500 rescues done, over 1,000 search and rescue personnel have gone door to door. They've done 108,000 structures to check on occupants. So that's an incredible effort uh, over really a relatively short period of time because we had a lot of massive resources. So I want to thank everybody that's been involved, local law enforcement, local first responders, urban search and rescue, Coast, Coast Guard. Florida Fish and Wildlife, 
all these assets mobilized, <coughs> excuse me, to be able to help. Uh, and there's a lot, you know, uh, Jimmy Patronus was down with me in Surfside, Kevin Guthrie, when the condo collapsed. And the problem with that was after, after the first however many 12 hours, any news you got was, was all bad news because you're finding people that had passed away in the collapse. Well, these rescue missions were able to save a lot of people, and not everyone needed to be rescued off the island. Some were fine, but they were stabilized. They were able to get whatever assistance they need. So really heroic effort, Herculean effort by our first responders, and I know these communities will really, really appreciate it. Uh, we also very quickly established these points of distribution for water and food, and we did it quicker than we've ever done it. Uh, the good news is we do have eight of those remaining, six are in Lee County, uh, most of the pods that were initially set up uh, have basically been asked to close by the counties because there hasn't been as big of a need at many days after the storm, which is good news. That's because the stores are open, things are starting to bounce back. So that's great, and uh, we will put resources where they're needed. But it's been almost 50 million bottles of water distributed and 2.6 million pounds of ice. So that's a massive amount of uh, relief. <clears throat> Also, the National Guard has handed out 130,000 blue tarps. Now, not everyone who is getting it has roof damage. Some people, you give them a tarp, they want a tarp because you never know what will happen. That's fine. But you do see some people utilizing those tarps, and we're happy to be able to do it. We now have 450 SpaceX Starlink Internet devices deployed in the impacted areas. Obviously, connectivity has done better in recent days than immediately after the storm. Nevertheless, if there's pockets, uh, we want to use that, and those have been really, really good. Thanks to the First Lady's efforts, the Florida Disaster Fund has raised a record $41 million for storm relief. And if you want to contribute, you can go www.floridadisasterfund.org or text DISASTER to 20222. So they've already deployed some of the, the money so we were just over in Punta Gorda, and we met with two groups. Um, we met with Operation Rubicon. Then we met with an organization that their job is to provide tools to the people that are responding to help citizens in need. So for example, Rubicon was in, uh, was in Charlotte County. They've been in Charlotte County. They helped a fellow from the American Legion. I went and saw him and met with them. And so they have these people, they come and they help fix debris. They get trees cleared. They can help you gut your drywall, get your carpet if you had flooding. Really, really good. They may need different tools. And so this group will provide tools for people that are going to help with home restoration. And that's a huge, huge thing. So they have massive numbers of tools. They're handing out a bunch of tools to the private organizations. But man, we've got some great people on the ground here who are working really, really well. And it's just, uh, it's an honor to be working with them. And if we, if the First Ladies Fund can help them uh, expand their efforts and be a force multiplier, we're going to do that. So the tools and some of these, these are groups that can qualify for that money because we want to continue with the progress. We know there's a lot of people. And if you think about it, you know, some folks, some of the elderly, you have a tree, a big tree in your front yard and you're 84 years old, are you just gonna be able to move that by yourself? No, you need people to come help you. So you have Rubicon, you have these other groups that are really doing a fantastic job. So we wanna to continue to do that. We're also gonna be having more announcements about other ways that the fund is helping get people back on their feet uh, after what's been a, you know, almost now, we're gonna be Wednesday, it'll be two weeks from the storm making landfall. It's been, been a, you know, it seems like almost yesterday in some respects, and then it's like these have been long hours for a lot of people. People that displace has been really tough. All the first responders have been working around the clock. These groups, uh, FEMA, state, everybody really working. So this has been a round the clock effort. But this fund, I think, is helping some really good groups. And these guys are battle hardened. They've been to Hurricane Ida in Louisiana. They've been to these Kentucky floods. They go where the need is greatest and they consistently do that so we're proud to have them here and um, i think to say more about what's going on with the disaster fund i'm proud to uh recognize our first lady
I'll just say of that $41 million that we've raised so far, the first million out the door went to organizations like Tool Bank and Team Rubicon who are in the ground helping folks. We also understand that this is going to be a long-term recovery for a lot of folks. And while FEMA is there, the state is there, we want to ensure that those funds are there to help people get back on their feet because we've seen so many people who have had flooding in their homes that might not necessarily have had flood insurance. So we're reducing the red tape and the bureaucracy to ensure that we can raise as much funds as possible to get those to the folks and also making sure that we're doing our due diligence and that there's no scamming. So we'll have the, the reduction of the red tape, but at the same time, we want to get it out as quickly as possible because we know that folks are really going to need that. Uh, on the other side, in addition to the funds, by the way, we've had more than 60,000 individual contributors across the country to the fund, which is great. We need to keep it up. So FloridaDisasterFund.org, if you can keep promoting that, we need to raise more funds. Uh, another thing that we're doing, I was in Sarasota the other day, and I was at one of the disaster recovery sites, uh, and I saw families in there meeting with all of the folks that they need, their private insurance, the state representatives from the Department of Economic Opportunity, FEMA, but I also saw a lot of kids. And as you saw a second ago, I have a four-year-old running around, and sometimes their attention spans don't go very long. And so one thing that we're going to work on is a toy drive. And we're going to do this toy drive through our faith-based and nonprofit partners. And what we would ask the people across the state of Florida to donate a toy, we're going to donate it to our faith and community-based partners, and then they will deliver it to the DRC. So don't worry about coming here to bring the toys. Bring it to our faith community partners, and we'll have that on a website very shortly. But I'll tell you, in Charlotte County, Murdoch Baptist Church, and in Lee County, Next Level Church. And you know, they're saying, well, if we have all the toys, and you know, we, all, we have so many DRCs, what are we going to do with the rest of them? And I said, you know what, the holidays are right around the corner. And I'm sure there's a lot of great kids out there that have been through some tough times that would love to see a toy on their doorstep. So thank you for, for what you're doing, the generosity of all of the people across the state and the country. And we're only getting started with the fun. So God bless you. All right. Kevin? Thank you, Governor. Thank you, uh, First Lady, for your leadership, your continued leadership and continued support. I want to thank the CFO behind me for his support and uh, also Secretary Eagle. These uh, men and women have been on the ground every single day since this uh, disaster has happened, and we could not do it. I couldn't do what I do here without their help and their state agencies. So, again, thank you very much to all the state agencies. Uh, we now have a total of, as the governor said, nine disaster recovery centers that increase the accessibility resources for residents across Central and Southwest Florida. All DRC sites are open daily from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. with the exception of Lee County. Lee County has extended hours from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. These are one-stop shops that provide residents with needed assistance to better help them understand the recovery process. But as the governor has said, you do not have to come here in person. You can actually do FEMA registration online. However, if you need a driver's license or you need a copy of a birth certificate or sometimes a death certificate, some of those vital statistics, the Department of Health is here on site with their, uh, their uh, vehicles to produce those documents on site, as well as the Florida Department of Highway Safety Motor Vehicles can produce driver's licenses here on site. You can speak with representatives and learn more about the programs that the state and the uh, FEMA has to offer. You can get an update on your status of your FEMA application here on site. You can speak with someone to help you understand any letters of notices you may receive from FEMA and then information on locating housing or rental assistance. We understand that navigating the recovery process and programs available may be very overwhelming. Please know that the division, along with your local, state, and federal partners, will be here throughout this process. At this particular site, I'll give a shout out real quick to the guys that are wearing indelible t-shirts. Those are our contract staff that come in and help out to help you navigate that process. So again, we appreciate uh, Indelible being here and helping you guys navigate that. Um, this particular site in the coming days, obviously working in a parking lot is not ideal, but we didn't want to unnecessarily delay being able to give assistance. So in this particular site in the coming days, we'll be moving to a brick and mortar location with air conditioning and so on but we didn't want to unnecessarily delay people in this community from getting assistance. So know that in the coming days, we'll be moving this to a nearby site, probably a mall. Uh, now that some of the first responder assets 
have moved out and are going back home. We can clean up those facilities, make them ready to uh, receive these services. So just know that we will be moving this location in the coming days. In addition to individual and public assistance, there are several programs that are available, including, including the FEMA Transitional Sheltering Assistance Program and low interest loans from the Small Business Administration. The governor has already talked about low interest loans with SBA and obviously what's available in the Secretary Eagle's shop. But let me talk very quickly about TSA, the Transition Shelter Assistance Program. This is where qualified individuals will be able to go move out of a shelter and move into a hotel. That starts with your FEMA registration. You need to make sure that you're registered for FEMA, get into the system so that we can start managing you into those uh, available programs. Please know that FEMA will contact you probably with an automated system that will either call you and it'll be an automated system or they'll text you on an automated system or they will email you on an automated system based on the information you provided in your registration intake. Please make sure you return those phone calls. Please make sure that you follow up on that information so that we can get you into some type of temporary shelter, which may include a hotel or motel. Activating this program is just another step in the long line of actions that we will continue to take, both FEMA and the Division of Emergency Management and supporting agencies to help you make sure the recovery process goes as smoothly as possible. I encourage every impacted resident to apply for individual assistance and also to inquire about the TSA program. In addition to residents impacted in Charlotte, uh, Lee, so these are the, this is where uh, TSA and economic injury disaster loans are turned on. The following counties are Charlotte, Collier, DeSoto, Flagler, Hardy, Highlands, Hillsborough, Lake, Lee, Manator, Manatee, Orange, Osceola, Pinellas, Polk, Pot Putnam, St. John's, Sarasota, Seminole, Volusia counties are all eligible for those programs. Small business loans are also, and, and some private nonprofit organizations, are also included in adjacent counties. Those adjacent counties are Alachua, Bradford, Brevard, Broward, Clay, Duval, Glades, Hendry, Indian River, Marion, Miami-Dade, Monroe, Okeechobee, Pasco, and Sumter counties. And I'm sure the secretary will probably follow up a little bit on those small business loans. Uh, I want to emphasize to residents that FEMA individual assistance does not, does not include debris removal. When we talk about debris removal being covered, that's for public assistance, that's for government entities. So I want to tell you how you can take advantage of getting assistance to help your private property debris. If a contractor tells you that they're a debris removal service in your, on your home and, they, and you can be reimbursed through FEMA, that is 100% incorrect. Again, if some contractor comes to your site and says, I can get that covered by FEMA, they are lying. Again, I've said it before, tell them to pack sand and leave. All right, do not take that. If you need help with your debris removal, here's the following thing you need to do. Call our crisis cleanup line at 1-800-451-1954. Again, that's 1-800-451-1954. You can call that line and we will get you free volunteer agency assistance to come to your home and help you get that debris to the roadway. Last, and I'd be remiss if I did not mention that today, marks the four years since Hurricane Michael made impact in the Panhandle. It also just happens to be my four year with state government. Yes, the first day I got to state government, I had a Cat 5 hurricane hit the Panhandle. I don't know if there's something about that, sir. I'm sorry. In the, aftermath, in the aftermath of the storm, first responders from this area provided relief and refuge to those impacted in the Panhandle. And today we see many from the Panhandle here in this community today. To date, nearly $2.5 billion has been obligated by FEMA for Hurricane Michael. This should serve as a reminder to the state of Florida that we are resilient together both FEMA, Florida Division of Emergency Management, and its mutual aid and state partners. Governor, and a special thanks to all the folks working here today um, at the newly uh, opened DRC, I thank you for your service. I thank you for your leadership. Okay, Dane. Well, every chance I get, I want to start by thanking the governor and the first lady for their commitment to Southwest Florida and the impacted areas. As a Southwest Floridian, I'm honored to be in this position to be able to help 
but I'm more honored to work alongside them because of the leadership they've given to have one of the fastest and most comprehensive responses in, uh, in the history of emergency response. Uh, it's both short-term and long-term, and the long-term commitment that the governor made today and the first lady is what I want to want to harp on. Now, DEO, we're responsible for helping uh, the communities get stood up and get the economies rolling. We've been very uh, helpful in getting these set up through uh, working with Jimmy Petronas and the Assurance Villas and Kevin Guthrie uh, and, and his team, and also DCF through the uh, uh, the, the HOPE coordinators that the, the First Lady spearheading and all of our other state agencies uh, were able to stand up DUA, Disaster Employment Assistance, the governor's leadership, but also help connect with jobs. At one of these events, Kevin leaned in and said, hey, hey I've got vendors who are looking for workers. And I said, well, I've got people looking for work. So we stood up a website immediately. You can learn all about disaster and employment assistance, uh, work opportunities, and the bridge loans the governor mentioned at floridadisaster.biz. But the long-term commitment is what's extremely important that we're talking about today. The governor just mentioned 126 million being awarded today on the four-year anniversary uh, to the communities impacted by Hurricane Michael. You can expect to see that commitment here in Southwest Florida. Uh, at DEO, we have the Office of Long-Term Resiliency, and we focus on helping communities get back on their feet long after all others have left. FEMA is doing an amazing job helping with immediate response and partnership with our with our uh, teams here on the ground. But their time will come and go. The insurance companies will come and go. The cameras will come and go. But we, as a state, will be here to assist. Uh, we are announcing. The 126 million announced today is now over 700 million that we've been able to award to Panhandle communities, and that's up to 1.9 million that we've been able to award across Florida for long-term resiliency. Nearly 800 million for Hurricane Irma, around 100 million for uh, uh, Matthew and Ermine with their 2016 storms, and we're about to announce 200 million for Hurricane Sally, which is two years ago. Now they're long-term. These are things like helping roads, uh, water, sewer, hardening shelters, hospitals, uh, police stations. But also today we're announcing that we've helped rebuild 500 homes in the Panhandle. Again, some are underinsured, FEMA can't help. So we're gonna come in the long term and help those get up and off their feet. Now, a lot of that we're announcing, you know, two years, three years, four years later, that's part of the design. Some of that's bureaucracy. Uh, go figure, state and, and federal government, government in general. We want to cut through that red tape. The governor's committed to doing so. We're already working with Congress to try to expedite that. And with our hope, a year from now, we could start making awards. And while I mentioned nearly 800 for Irma, uh, 700 for Michael, maybe we can get a billion for Southwest Florida and the surrounding communities. So we'll be standing by, we'll be fighting uh, uh, to make sure that you are not forgotten. And uh, with this governor, I can assure you that he'll be here day in, day out to make sure that you have what you need. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Good morning. Thank you all for being here. Uh, whether you're here from Okaloosa County, thank you all so much for being here to take care of our folks here in Southwest Florida or, or over in Fort Pierce. Thank you all so much for being here. The recovery is, it's guys, it's, it's not a sprint, it's a march. Every single day, I promise you, it's gonna get better. But what I've gotta have is some cooperation from you and you've gotta have a little bit of your own street smarts, a little savvy. If anybody's offering you anything for free, that don't you don't need to take the bait we're in the recovery mode there's going to be a tremendous amount of dollars poured into this area primarily by your insurance companies as of today insurance companies since two weeks ago have already paid out 207 million dollars worth of insurance claims already so they are here they're doing their job they're writing checks I just want to make sure every one of those dollars goes to you not to some predator who gets you to sign up for something you don't realize what you're signing so you're under duress, so if somebody offers you gas or a kickback or money, it's not worth it. I can't protect every single transaction at every single doorstep. We're gonna do our absolute best. So this is where we've got to make sure our media partners are sharing this word and protecting you from those predators that come in and prey on you when you're vulnerable. That's why we have law enforcement. We're here to try to create a deterrent. And I promise every single day, it's gonna get better. Now. Some people don't have electricity, but thanks to the governor's efforts, 42,000 linemen later, almost everybody does. But if you're operating off of a generator, this is a carbon monoxide detector, okay? These are free. You can go right over to this tent right behind me, and we will give you one. You never want to run your generator anywhere inside your house. That means not in your garage either. Your garage is inside your house. You don't want to run it anywhere near an open window, okay? And when you fill these things up, you gotta let them cool off. So like, there's like a 20-20-20 rule. So 
after you, you start running, you want to make sure the generator is at least 20 feet away from your house. When you're going to refill up with gas, you need to let it cool off for 20 minutes, okay? And then make sure you pick up one of these because you don't want to have anywhere. We, we have deaths that happen afterwards because people don't know any better. You're struggling. You're looking for answers. So that's what we're here for. Dane and the, the emergency manager director, Kevin Guthrie, and the governor's office, they've put this amazing group of forces, and they're leaning forward. They really are. They're leaning forward to hold your hand to help you get through this. One thing I want to share about with the governor and first lady, so, and this kind of tells you the testament of this couple, and he gets sworn in as governor, and Michael hit my hometown of Panama City, okay, devastated where I live. The first day he is officially in office, he's in Panama City. The second day he's officially in office, he's in Panama City. And what's he doing? Hurricane Michael recovery. And here we are four years later, and he still talks about Hurricane Michael and what he's doing to help Northwest Florida. That's the type of service you're getting out of this public servant right here. I'm, uh, I'm so proud. I'm so proud to be part of this effort. I'm so proud of his leadership. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not going to happen overnight. You've got to be patient. You've got to work. But this governor is pushing harder than anybody I've ever seen lead this state through a disaster. It's been amazing, his leadership. He's put together a heck of a team. And the last thing I'll leave you is our, our urban search and rescue teams. We had deployed over 1,100 men and women, as the governor said, had physically touched over 100,000 structures. They're departing. As they depart, you will start to see your community start to come back together. You'll start to see the roads, you'll see the debris start to get cleaned up. But again, the insurance process is gonna be a little bit longer. That's why we got these villages, that's why we're pushing the carriers to write their checks. You're gonna struggle finding contractors. You're gonna struggle getting somebody to replace your roof. I just gotta warn you, make sure you're, you're dealing with only a licensed Florida contractor. Here's a problem that's gonna happen. You're panicking because you have a hole in your roof. You're going to agree to sign up with somebody because you're vulnerable, because you're passionate, because you're concerned. If you don't sign up with a licensed Florida contractor, we have got no way to go after them if they do a bad job. So again, you've got to do a little bit of your homework on there, and that's why I remind people over and over, your first call needs to be to your insurance agent. Your second call, if you don't, if you don't know who your insurance agent is, call your insurance carrier. And if you don't know who your insurance carrier is, then call us, one 877 my FLCFO. If you make your first call to one of those three, we will help you. Don't sign up for anybody to help you with your claim right now. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you're going to get $100,000 potentially, but your carrier initially gives you $50,000, okay? And that's not enough to do the job. You get your bids, that's not enough to do your job. If you go out and hire somebody, they're going to get a piece of that money. They're going to get it. So call us. Let us break loose as much money as we can. You could always hire public assistance. You can always hire a public adjuster. You can always hire somebody to help you manage your claim, but get your maximum dollar without anybody else being on the process. Anyway, it's um, it's going to be a, a long road, but the state of Florida stands together. We're not going to leave you. We're going to be here. This guy has been here every single day for two weeks straight. Proud of this man. Thank you. God bless. Well, we, uh, we're really fortunate to have so many great people working so hard to help these communities. I was uh, down in Collier County Friday night. We stopped by. Even though they had record storm surge, they had their Crosstown Rivalry High School football game. Community turned out. Schools had just opened that week. Now we're going to have Charlotte open. You're going to have that happening. You see a lot of the, the infrastructure is, is bouncing back in terms of businesses and uh, uh, look, it's, it's not easy, but I would say the resiliency has been uh, incredible. And that's a lot of just uh, about the people here. And so we're, uh, we're, we're fortunate to have, uh, have a great state and have a lot of great people. So thank you all. Okay, any questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so uh, they are going to have an announcement, I think, this week. They believe that there's a, a number of schools that can go back uh, relatively soon. As you know, some of them uh, are, a few did were destroyed and there's some others that have, but you will have uh, very, very soon, I think there'll be announcements that, that a significant portion of Lee County is gonna go back to school. So that's, that's really, really good and it really helps. And I, I tell you, I talk with some of the mothers in the, in the shelters who lost their homes 
and they weren't was worried about their home they were just worried about their kids being back in school so it's a big relief to a lot of parents to be able to do that and uh, and we thank the, the school systems for working really hard uh, to, to get back as quickly as possible yes ma'am okay <laughs> He'll, he has Can you talk, talk to Kevin? I'll, I'll talk to him, too. I'll talk well, to we, him. But we did do uh, an emergency. In my initial executive order, we had emergency prescriptions. Okay, well, we'll talk to Kevin. We'll get it We'll get it worked out. Yeah, it's, it's not a problem. So, yeah. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll go. I'll say hi to you all. All right, thanks. Every, yeah, one here, here. If you don't mind, just repeat the question one more time. Yeah, so the Blue Roof program from the U.S. Army Corps of our engineers cannot get into that type of situation. What we would recommend them do is, you know, we, we still have a couple of places that still have tarps available. If they, if, if they cannot afford a tarp, they cannot find that, then they can contact us at the Florida Division of Emergency Management. We'll start putting those pieces together, working with a nonprofit agency on how we can do that. Possibly put some uh, something attached to the fascia of the uh, gutters and whatnot, but we'll figure that out, okay? Great. Right. Yeah, go ahead. No, I just want to say, though, as a mom, I think you see us here day in and day out because we understand that this is not only a challenge for a lot of fo folks, but also for a lot of families. And so as you see issues arise, you've got an incredible team and a governor who never leaves to ensure that we're getting you everything that you need. So as a mom of a four-year-old who's running around here somewhere, we're here and we got your back. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay.